These are challenging times for so many Canadians, including Albertans. Families are struggling to put food on their tables, pay their bills, and business owners are trying desperately to stay afloat. Political changes were made. Now we have a new premier here in Alberta with Daniel Smith, and she has a new cabinet as well. Now a man who used to be part of the UCP is Drew Barnes. He's now an independent MLA for Cypress Medicine Hat, and he joins us now from the hat. Drew, welcome back to Bridge City News. Good morning, Hal. Thanks for taking time to talk to me. Now, Drew, you used to be part of the United Conservative Party. Premier Smith recently won a seat, as you know, in Brooks Medicine Hat in your area. Any chance that maybe you and Smith can get together for a cup of coffee and talk about you returning to the party? Well, well, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'm very grateful to the people of Cypress Medicine Hat for electing me three times. And of course, I was ejected from the UCP caucus about 18 months ago for speaking out against um, COVID lockdowns, uh, you know, some financial ways that weren't focused on families. And, uh, you know, I'm in an interesting spot where still a big percentage of my constituents want me to stay as an independent. But in answer to your specific question, I've talked to Premier Smith several times. Uh, I've let her know where, where, I've, where I stand. I've offered my services. Um, you know, I absolutely believe how that, as you said, that we have an affordability crisis, an economic crisis in Alberta. The government of, of Alberta needs to do something to bring spending and taxes down so families have more opportunity. I've advocated strongly for ending the 2% small business tax so small businesses have more hope and, and opportunity. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see if the Smith government uh, shares those values. Yeah, the provincial election is coming up next May. Have you decided if you will in fact run again? It sounds like you you are. Well, I, you know, I'm very, very grateful for the chance to represent Cypress Medicine Hatters. I believe I still have the energy, the enthusiasm and the support to do it. So the decision from here is, do I do I try to rejoin the UCP? Do I stay as an independent? Um, my, my constituents, God bless them, haven't been a whole bunch of help. They're, they're almost evenly split, where a third of them want me to stay as an independent. A third of them want me to get back to the UCP. And Hal, just as an aside, 20% are unsure and 20% want me to go away regardless. So uh, <laughs> we're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> Drew, I know you're a popular guy in Cypress Medicine Ad, but come on, running as an independent is a challenge. You don't have the backing of a party. So that has to be consideration as well. That, that has to be the consideration. You're so right. But... Um, People every day text me or call me and say, hey, we so like how you've had the ability to stay focused on the economy, on government's overreach during the COVID mandates. I've been able to not be harnessed by the party uh, and, and speak out on their behalf. Hal, even since uh, Premier Smith was elected, which, you know, um, as Premier, which is a month or six weeks ago now, I've been a loud advocate for increasing the tax exemption for all Albertans increasing the family tax exemption for, for families in Alberta, ending the 2% small business tax, going back to our 10% flat tax, and doing something about the high cost of utilities. Uh, my, my idea is to take the tier one carbon tax that big industry pays and use that to subsidize residential families' uh, transmission costs. Uh, if I was in caucus, Hal, I couldn't be doing that. And, and until I see the Smith government focused on... Um, reducing spending, reducing taxes, um, I, I would suggest I'm better on the outside. And a lot of people would argue as well, put a cap on car insurance rates, you know, which are going through the roof as well. Now, Drew, you're talking to a lot of Hatters right now, people in Medicine Hat, are they pleased with the new leadership of the UCP? They, they are. Uh, I mean, I, her, her mandate, her, her majority win in the recent uh, by-election was a little a little more narrow than some had hoped for. I think she won with 53 percent. Uh, but, you know, there's many, many factors in that. A by-election had low voter turnout. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the parties, you know, in opposition to her were, were perhaps a bit more organized. Uh, so, so people are pleased. People down here, you know, Southern Alberta, Hal, we, we get forgotten a lot. And anytime we can have the Premier understand Southern Alberta, Medicine Hat, Lethbridge better, that's only good for us, even if it's just a six month window. Um, and I will say this, I'm grateful that uh, Premier Smith has committed to run again in Brooks Medicine Hat in the general at the end of May. So um, she, she's learned a lot about Southern Alberta and that's only good. You know, as we talked about earlier, Drew, there are a lot of business closures and a lot of people dealing with mental health issues and addictions during the pandemic as we're slowly making our way out here. How do you feel the people in Medicine Hat are doing now? 
Uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, Medicine Hat, like so many communities, we were hit hard with self-harm and a mental health crisis. And, and our economy is is not great. Still today, Hal, our, our economy is, is, is weaker. Um, you know, house sales are very, very slow now. The city is quiet. Um, we, we don't have as much oil and gas development activity as we used to. Um, it just came out in the, um, the living, uh, wage, uh, mechanism that somebody did that medicine hats living wage was, I think was $17 and 32 cents, the lowest in Alberta by quite a margin, uh, reflective of, of perhaps our weaker economy. So yeah, we're, we're still hurting, but Again, to me, that's why government's got to spend less so they can tax less. Let's give our families hope. Let's give our entrepreneurs and our hard workers hope. Let's give our small businesses a chance to compete, to give us service, and to get back on their feet. Uh, you know, we, we've we got this situation now where we seem to just wait for, for one government handout after another. And uh, picking winner and losers, the unfairness that that creates, I don't believe is good for our culture long term. And uh, I hope the UCP can pivot and uh, start to spend and tax less. You know, there's been talk of the Alberta government eliminating the provincial fuel tax once again. Do you think that'll make much of a difference here when it comes to the affordability crisis here yeah, in the province? Yeah, it, it, it will certainly help, you know, and, and, and I think it needs to be done as well as reducing business and family income taxes. Hell, our, our blessing is our curse. Uh, our oil and gas royalties are about to go up by at least $8 billion a year as I think it's five to eight oil sand plants have met their cost of capital recovery. So they're going to pay higher royalties. Let's use that money to uh, reduce Albertans' taxes so Albertans can work hard and provide choice and services. And we can create the kind of culture uh, that we've always had, where we work hard, we take risk, and we help each other. Drew, how do you feel about some of the smaller independence parties positioning themselves as maybe an alternative to the UCP in the next election? Do you feel that'll maybe split the right vote? Well, first of all, choice is good for all Albertans. And, and, and you know, Hal, if you don't vote for what you want, you'll never get it. So the vote splitting argument to me just it isn't doesn't hold a lot of water and it just you know reinforces the two legacy parties that that are there now uh so so i'm grateful that that hardworking albertans most of them on their own time and their own dime are getting together developing ideas sharing ideas and with the idea of, of more prosperous Alberta families, uh, Alberta being the freest and most prosperous place. I'm glad they're presenting ideas, and uh, let's let's see where it goes. Uh, how our, our our system could use way more involvement. Our system could use more ideas for sure. Drew, in your opinion, what will it take to ensure that the UCP holds on to power and fends off a charging Rachel Notley and the NDP? Uh, thank you. What it's going to take first and foremost is, is finding conservative values again. Uh, family values so families can prosper and take care of their choice in education and health care. What is going to take a smaller government and lower taxes? Um, you know, there, there's some things that seem like they're out there, but they're the foundation of creating wealth and strong families. Things like property rights, strengthening the rule of law, how we're living in this world now of catch and release with our criminal system. That has so got to change. Uh, and, and I think if the UCP government and Premier Smith were to focus on a government that spends less, lower taxes, um, and, and rural crime, I think they'd go a long way to get re-elected. You know, obviously the big cities are big battlegrounds too. Calgary and Edmonton, uh, the UCP and NDP are both putting a lot of their efforts in there. What will it take for the UCP to hold on to some of those seats and secure some new ones in the bigger cities? Well, thanks. It, it will take some fresh ideas. Um, you know, we haven't had low taxes and strong conservative values for decades now. So it's going to take uh, it's going to take a strong move from the UCP government to, to significantly reduce taxes. Uh, you know, really, uh, when I was thinking, you know, earlier about the Ken Kenny government legacy, they reduced uh, big corporation taxes uh, down. Um, I, you know, I think we've seen some benefits of that, but not what we could. Why, why instead can't we do the same for families? Hal, when we had a 10% flat tax in Alberta,
Alberta. That went a long way to diversify our economy because we attracted risk takers, hard workers, and and people that gave back to their communities and their neighbors. Uh, and I think a strong move in that direction is how you get reelected. The UCP government, Premier Smith, needs to show Albertans that they are conservative and they are significantly different from Rachel Notley and and the NDP. Drew, looking back to the results of the Fair Deal panel, why do you feel that a provincial police force is still a good idea? Uh, it, it's just a good idea, first of all, because right now our justice system is, is broken. We also need some changes in, in Crown Prosecutor and judicial manners there. But, but it's all about gaining some leverage with Alberta in addition to, to better policing, more accountable policing. How the fact that not only do Albertans send over $25 billion a year to, to Ottawa, but we have inequity in the Supreme Court. Quebec is guaranteed three seats. Ontario is guaranteed three seats. Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba just rotate one on, on, on a base on a basis of, of whose turn it is. And the fact that so many laws are geared for home ownership in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver instead of agriculture and resource development in in Alberta and Saskatchewan. We those are the kind of changes we need Ottawa to to pay attention to. And doing things like our own police force our own tax collection, our own control over the, our immigration needs would go a long way to show Ottawa that we can take care of ourselves, just like Quebec does. Okay, let's talk about the pension plan for just a moment. Rachel Notley and the NDP have slammed the UCP for pushing for the Alberta pension plan over the Canada pension plan. What are your thoughts on the Alberta government potentially taking over our retirement or pension funds? Oh, absolutely, we need to. And for the simple reason, it would be at least a $3 billion benefit for Alberta workers and families. Uh, the number could be as high as $5 billion, but between 3 and $5 billion more annually leaves Alberta in terms of higher premiums or it doesn't come back in terms of, of uh, lower benefits for our seniors. So number one, it would go a huge distance to, to make life more economically prosperous here. But, but Hal, that's a, an interesting one. And, and nothing should be done without making sure Albertans are fully transparent and fully engaged. Uh, when I was on the Fair Deal panel, many Albertans came to me and said they liked the idea, but they were, they were concerned about the risk and they were concerned about how it would work. So I would challenge and encourage Premier Smith to um, go slower on the pension, uh, to have a um, referendum for all Albertans, uh, a year or two from now. Um, and how it's based on, on kind of three things. Number one, Albertans need to know what we're doing with their money. Number two, it's based on, on making sure that they have the full and final say on, on, on what happens with their money. But third, it's about getting a better deal, deal with Ottawa. And um, please remember that most of us want to stay a strong part of, of Canada, but nothing moves unless it's pushed. And it's time to push Ottawa for fairness for Alberta families. Let's chat a bit about property rights and the importance for Albertans. Is it more just a, an agricultural sector issue? What are your thoughts? No, it's, it's essential for Albertans. It is a bit of a concept that's out there for sure. But Hal, there, there's two components that create wealth. Property rights, your right to own something, to use it as you want, to buy it or to buy it, sell it, lease it or not. And the rule of law. And you look at where Alberta's at now, property rights with bigger and bigger overreaching government, uh, with more and more expropriations, with, with the Bill uh, 36, the Alberta Land Stewardship Act that the progressive conservatives tried to do 10 or 12 years ago, that really, really hurt and diminished property rights, coupled with the rule of law right now in Alberta. I mean, I, when I talk to business people who are 10 years plus in their civil court cases and can't get court time. When, when you hear about the catch and release system for our offenders, where, where the consequences for serious offenses are, are avoided a lot of times, um, these are the things how we create wealth. And, and Alberta, we have hardworking, risk-taking people. We, we need property rights and effective rule of law so we can create wealth for everyone. Now, speaking of rights, Drew, can you explain why it's so important for you that Albertans maintain their rights over government authority? Absolutely, it's, it's essential. Um, government has a tendency to overreach. Uh, we saw it with the, uh, and, and be not clear as to what they're doing, we saw it with the COVID mandates. Uh, we didn't have a, a curfew, but we had restrictive exemption rules, uh, which was really, really the same thing. And, um, and because we have 
haven't, because we've had big government for a long time, I think a lot of, of smart, hardworking Albertans feel things are out of their control. So too often they turn to the government uh, to make a decision and government picks winners and losers, creates some unfairness. That just per- you know, breeds uh, unhappiness and uncertainty for all of us. So, so I believe how that we need a written constitution that, you know, if we're ever in a COVID situation again, that a high, high percentage of ND of MLAs in a free vote uh, get to say yes or no, and that way constituents will have the final word. Drew, are you hopeful with Lethbridge East MLA and the new infrastructure minister, Nathan Newdorf, that Highway 3 can be twinned all the way down to Medicine Hat? I absolutely, I'm very, very hopeful. Uh, the, yeah, uh, we, we needed help, you know, you know, Lethbridge is doing doing well and, and, and there's so many reasons that we should join the Medicine Hat and the Cypress County uh, economy stronger with Lethbridge and uh, safety is a big thing big thing of course I remember when I was first elected in 2012 that some parts of Highway 3 had a higher traffic count than Highway 63 to Fort McMurray so with safety and a stronger economy in mind and again uh, we're very very fortunate oil and gas royalties look like they're going to be strong for the next several years let's uh, let's do what we need to do to uh, make Alberta the freest and most prosperous place Drew Barnes is the independent MLA for Cypress Medicine Hat. Thanks for joining us today from Medicine Hat. Hal, I appreciate it. Have a good rest of the day.